Divesting. Are you using specialty boluses, like extended boluses? If you're not, we need to talk. In this video, we are going to go over the life-changing magic of the extended bolus and how you can incorporate it into your diabetes management to make mealtime a little bit less stressful. My name is Rachel. I am a registered nurse, certified diabetes care and education specialist, and a person living with diabetes. And the extended bolus is one of my favorite features that I personally like to use and I love helping my clients use so that they can eat a wider variety of food and stay in range. The extended bolus is a feature on an insulin pump that allows the user to lengthen the time that the bolus of insulin is given over. So when you are using the just regular bolus wizard feature on your insulin pump or you're injecting a bolus using a syringe or an insulin pen, that insulin all goes in pretty much around the same time and it will hit you, you know, in that uh, short acting insulin kind of range. So it's onset is about 15, 10 to 15 minutes, and then peak and duration, all that good stuff. You, you know the drill. But there are definitely instances where we don't want the insulin to hit super quickly. And we also maybe want it to last a little bit longer than that duration of three to five hours depending on what we're eating and how we're eating. The best example of this that I know how to explain is the effect that pizza typically has on our blood sugars. So if you have been kind of new to eating pizza and bolusing for pizza, likely what ends up happening is you maybe give yourself that insulin 15 minutes before you eat, and you give yourself a regular normal bolus and the result is a drop in blood sugar that you likely have to correct for and then over the next few hours your blood sugar actually elevates and rises pretty significantly and you may have to correct it then and it just makes pizza kind of a frustrating experience and the reason for this is the way that pizza is made up is it's very high fat pretty high protein and typically very high carbohydrate as well. So this means that our body is going to be digesting it a lot slower than a moderately balanced meal. And because of that, glucose is not going to hit our bloodstream at the same time that we usually see it hitting. So I, you know, pre-boluses are recommended for about 10 to 15 minutes before your meal. And that's so that the digestion of the carbohydrates and the release of the glucose can line up your the effect of your insulin in your bloodstream. When we are eating something that is higher in fat, and that is typically something that is greater than 40 grams of fat, then we want to make sure that our insulin doesn't hit our bloodstream faster than the food does. So all insulin pumps have the extended bolus feature. Some might just have like a different name for it. For example, Tandem Insulin Pumps and the Omnipod call it an extended bolus. And the Medtronic pump has two different kinds of boluses and their version of an extended bolus is what they call the square wave bolus. For somebody who is using multiple daily injections, you won't get like the exact effect of a true extended bolus, but you can extend the amount of injections that you take over a period of time. So you can, you know, instead of just taking all your insulin up front, split it up into three or four injections instead over however many hours. Are you a insulin pumper or an MDI user? Let me know in the comments below. I'm always curious. There are three times when I recommend using an 
extended bolus, number one would be high fat meals. Especially if you are someone that is eating like a very low carb, very high fat meal plan, something that is um, a lot higher in fat than pretty much everything else in that food, then the extended bolus is going to be a really great option for you to use. The second instance that is helpful using the extended bolus is during times of like grazing and snacking. So those would be times like cocktail parties or at the movies when you're eating popcorn over like two hours um, instead of all at once. I mean, I, I sometimes eat the entire bucket all at once, but most people just snack on it over a long period of time. This is a great time to use an extended bolus because it gives you a steady stream of insulin over a certain period of time. So maybe you're just eating small amounts of food and you just need to kind of increase the length of time that the insulin is given over so that you don't tank and crash during your cocktail party. The third time that a extended bolus might be helpful is if maybe you're a little unsure of how much you want to bolus for. Maybe you're not sure how much you're gonna eat. Maybe you are unsure of how the, the food is going to react in your body. Whatever it may be, um, sometimes it's helpful to just have that insulin going in slower so you can cut it off if you need to. Uh, people with small children find this really useful. That's typically who I find um, is experimenting with that and using it is, is maybe if your kid is a little bit more unpredictable with uh, whether or not they're gonna wanna eat their entire plate or not, or um, they, they may not like what you give them, then an extended bolus can be really helpful for that because it doesn't give everything up front. You might have a little bit harder of a time with keeping the blood sugar steady in that instance, but safety first, it can be very helpful in that situation. Extended boluses and the recommendation for how much to give and over how many hours is going to vary greatly from individual to individual. The way your body digests food and all that good stuff is very individual and personal, so it'll take some trial and error when you're first starting out. I want to preface this by saying that I would go talk to your endocrinologist or your diabetes care and education specialist at your clinic and um, they can help you figure out a plan for how to do these types of bolus. But what current research and the ADCES recommends for a extended bolus kind of baseline whenever you're first starting out is to just experiment with extending the insulin over three hours. Now you'll see on a tandem in Omnipod that there are two little sections to put in percentages and a true extended bolus is one where 100% of it is given slowly over X amount of hours. Now that X is going to, again, really vary based off of the type of food you're eating and the way that your body digests, but the um, guidelines recommend starting with about three hours and then kind of go from there. If you see yourself spiking after that three hours, then you can adjust the hours next time and add a couple more and see if that helps keep you in range. Do you think this is something that you might use? Drop your favorite food emoji in the comments on the type of food that you would like to try this for, whether that's pizza or a ton of guacamole, whatever it might be. Um, let me know and let me know if this is something you've tried and had, had some good luck with or if it's something that you're still figuring out yourself. This is also something that I go over in my Bolus Busters course, which was created to help people with diabetes learn how to take insulin for a wider variety of foods like pizza, Mexican food, takeout, and frappuccinos, of course. And if you have not subscribed to this channel already, please do so that you can be updated whenever new videos come out. 
I also post a lot of these tips and tricks and information on my Instagram at give me some sugar diabetes. And I am excited to see you all again in the next video. Take care.